Life Changing Wizard. Welcome to my Google Hangout, which is on air live every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time or Mountain Standard, Standard Time. And today we are going to talk about getting clear on, on your lifestyle, business lifestyle goals. So I have a guest here, wonderful person and amazing coach, and he's going to talk about all this everything he knows and I'm sure he knows so much we only have short period of time so of course everything he could pack into this um, action-packed session that's what he's going to have and give to us so he's a very giving person wonderful to be around wonderful to learn from and here he is Eric Asbick also known as your next move business coach at yournextmoveexpert.com he offers programs for people who are building a solar service business based business and want support getting going and getting growing his motto is we help entrepreneurs build businesses they love Eric has made a number of bold moves which led him to a succession of roles that fired his passion in leading teams to create new businesses, services, and offers that won over one million in new business. Those roles include systems engineering for new products and Bell Labs, Product management at AT&T in a new hypergrowth data service startup. Eric had also been a program director at NCR's quarter billion dollar global Cisco program. Business development at Cisco Systems working with his biggest, their biggest strategic global partners and most recently starting his own business helping entrepreneurs build businesses they love. For over 10 years, Eric has been coaching individuals and groups with outstanding results. Eric holds a BS in Industrial Engineering and Operations Research, an MS in System Engineering, and an MBA in New Venture Development. And I know how difficult it get to get so much education, how much effort and money and energy you have to spend and how much you need to sacrifice to be so well educated, so well rounded in all ways and to be so such a great guy and charming as well. So welcome Eric. Hi. Hi Irina. How are you? I'm great, and I'm so happy to have you here, Eric. That's wonderful. I so see my a great first, opportunity. My first question to you. I've heard that you referred, and I just said it myself, you referred to as your next business move coach. Can you elaborate on that and explain it to us? Sure. Uh, I, I've been told, and... Uh, you know, sometimes you don't even appreciate what you actually do yourself until other people kind of come back to you and uh, let and give you their feedback. And uh, uh, I help people to see the barriers to getting what they want. And I had one person uh, that I worked with recently, and she said, "You know, you hold up a mirror and let me see the things that are in my way, uh, the blind spots that I have, and." show me what they are and then I can make adjustments and take the actions necessary to make my business be successful and so that's that's basically what I do mm. business to be successful and of course business is all about successful people I believe so how would what would what are the most common characteristics of successful people would you elaborate on that sure I'd be happy to and there's actually one thing that I want to make a point about and uh, it's it's a key thing about successful people and that is they ask 
for what they want. It sounds very simple, but really, some it's um, sometimes it. Um, some people are very effective at that, and other people kind of hint and suggest and and uh, kind of get around the get around it in some kind of uh, different ways. But if you want to be successful, ask for what you want. Now, you need to know what you want to ask for it, and we'll go into that later. And you're right, Derek, because uh, we think that it's a very simple question, but it's actually not. And Usually people know very well what they don't want because they have it at this moment, but it's very hard for many, many people, and I know it from working with my own clients, that they don't know what they want. It's hard, so it's really you are in the right place teaching the right things, that's for sure. Sure. Uh, why do, let's talk about yourself first. You have a fascinating story, and I would like you to share your story. So, what do, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Well, I'll say that it started when I was a kid, and my dad, who was a German immigrant, uh, he came over to the U.S. when he was nine, and. Uh, uh, during a winter passage, so you can kind of imagine by boat back in those days. Uh, that was quite something. And uh, he, uh, he was very successful in his own right as a chemical researcher and various things, but he had that immigrant dream. And so while I was growing up, one of the things he did on the side was that he, he designed and patented and built a, an amphibious motorhome, a 24-foot long motorhome, you drive it in the water, pull up the wheels, and it turns into a boat. And uh, actually I have pictures of it going in, and it's maiden voyage, driving off the boat ramp into the water and <laughs> coming around and coming out, and mom and dad at the boat show and those sort of things. And, you know, as I was growing up, I saw all that happening. And as it turns out, my dad was all ready to launch that business in the early 70s. And he had the financing lined up and he was ready to sign for leases for manufacturing space, all those things. And the first oil crisis hit. And this was one of those um, uh, machines that it, it had very bad gas mileage, but it also used a lot of petroleum products to build the hull and those sort of things. So he backed off. He had a young family and he just, you know, he just he thought, I can't really do this right now. But a couple years later, he things had settled out and uh, he did another round of preparation even better than the first one and he was literally within a month of signing everything and the second even worse gas crisis hit and he backed off and he never he never realized that he never launched that business and he never had that actually happen with all, all the work that happened in it now I'll say that he ended up going into business with my uncle and and he did okay I mean he's it turned out very well but he still talks about it and I think for me, uh, one thing is I saw his entre entrepreneurial spirit. And another thing is, you know, I just remember him saying things like, you know, the real money is in having your own business and the satisfaction and those sort of things. So as I was coming along with myself and uh, I'd gotten my, un my undergraduate degree in industrial engineering and was working and I got the bug. I just suddenly realized, you know, I really want to get into something of my own. So I, I went back to school and followed a ver followed a various paths and ended up doing things within companies starting businesses, as you'd mentioned. And by the way, it wasn't a million dollars of new business. It was a hundred, uh, hundred uh, it was a hundred million dollars. It wasn't a billion. It was a hundred million dollars of business. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. I just want to make sure on the, on the, <laughs> it's on the record accurately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I and, but, but nonetheless, you know, um, it was very fun to be creating new products and services and businesses within those companies, but it never, on the other hand, really scratched my own itch to start something of my own, and now I've been doing that. So, you know, a long, a long path, but, you know, I guess, I guess I'll say it's, it's, in, it's under your skin, it's in your blood, it's kind of nagging at you, or it's not, and it's one of those things that I just, uh, for me, uh, it's just been a fascination and interest, and it's one thing. It's something I don't want to put away, you know. <laughs> so, and I think there are other people that are like that too. I mean, look at yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been dreaming about my own business for a very long time too, and had my challenges. And as your dad, I've been an immigrant. I didn't come with a boat, but 
the rest was <laughs> challenging too. And also one time I was watching on TV how, I don't remember what the program was and it was many years, but some company decided to have a statistics to collect the statistics. So they went in the street and they started asking people, just passers by, to tell them if they wanted their own business or they want to work for somebody else. And mm -hmm. it was interesting to me, so I was watching. A lot of people actually said they wanted to work for somebody else, and they would give reasons, uh, all kinds of reasons why, sure. and some people vice versa. So you could see the diversity, how uh, life is so interesting. Some people are meant to be entrepreneurs, while other people are very comfortable being at the job, and it just everyone has their own destiny, everyone has their own dreams. So. Interesting that not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. So I would say to our listeners right now, if you have this dream of being an entrepreneur and it's somewhere inside of you, I remember how I was many years ago, I would think about, wow, how interesting it would be to be in business, but it felt like something unachievable. It felt like something that was not even close, but the desire is was always there in my heart. And right. you could see when you look back, if you have that, if you look back and see, okay, I wanted that dream, and then I have um, uh, maybe steps. I take steps, and I'm close to it, but still don't venture. So it comes, it comes. So. Eric, you're in the right place. We're talking about the right subject, so let's move on with that. And Absolutely. talking about the challenges, tell me, Eric, what particular challenges are you facing? Because, you know, everybody has something to share. So go ahead, please, with your challenges. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'll say, um, you know, there's the usual things of getting a business going. But uh, what I want to add in the background is I have a kind of uh, cancer called multiple myeloma, which is a, it's a blood cancer, and uh, it causes a variety of problems. And I went through a whole series of things with uh, tumors in my spine and back surgery and stem cell transplants and those sort of things. And, and now I live with it. It's one of those treatable but not curable cancers. And you know I'm doing remarkably well, and you would never know if you met me and talked to me that that was going on. But you know, it's one of those things where I have to, there's certain things I have to be mindful of and take care of in terms of my lifestyle. And yet, you know, crazy it is, as it is, I want my own business. <laughs> and I want, you know, some of the other kinds of uh, benefits that come with that. And, you know, of course, there's the challenges. But, but what I'll say is that, you know, we all have stuff we deal with. And, um, you know, some of it's bigger, some of it's smaller. But, uh, but you know, it, it makes you it, it makes you think it ha it makes you it causes you to say, okay, what? I'll, I'll speak for myself. I have to step back and say, I want my own business, and I've got to take care of certain things to make sure that I take care of myself. So how do I make it all fit together in a way that I I get what I want in the life and and have those big those big goals succeed. Wow, it's quite a challenge, and I know having or trying to start business on your own and then having your business and building it, it's already tremendously challenging, tremendously. And on top of that, to have such a serious health issue, um, my hands down to you, I applaud you because you are such an example for everybody because some people as you know well I'm diagnosed with some some difficult situation then I will give up I'll just be what the, you know I I won't even go there but you are vice versa you took a upstream road and it's just amazing so Thank my you. Let, let me add one thing actually in in that vein because um, Something I've learned over the years, you know, I kind of did a little bit of it myself, but it's become more formalized as I've taken some own some of my own personal development, uh, you know, uh, courses, and and also just kind of worked through a number of obstacles for myself. And that is, um, you can certainly you can you can either give up, 
<laughs> or you can just try to survive and make do and and uh, and get by, you know, just endure. Uh, but for me, you know, the thing that's the most satisfying is to say, okay, great, here's where I am. This is exactly where I am. It's it is this. It's not that. You know, <laughs> I can wish for things to be different, but here's where it is. And and then here's the question: What do I want to create from here? What do I want my life to look like? And when you start asking those kind of questions, it's amazing because, yeah, I mean, there's stuff you have to deal with. And everybody's got it. And, and I've got mine, and it sounds dramatic, but I know there are people that have their own versions of that kind of thing to deal with. And the question is, what do you want to create from here? Where are you starting? And what is exactly a coach, a mentor, a teacher? The teacher sets an example. So you are definitely an example of what the option, what's the best option for our lives. No, never give up, never live a mediocre life, but strive to be your best, strive to do the best. All right, so we... All in your heart. Yeah. <laughs> We already we already touched on um, that we dream about business or dreamed about business ourselves and you and I for a long time it found, we found out. So how exactly how long have you been dreaming about your business and how did it exactly happen? Uh, yes. Well, so I, I kind of talked about that a bit earlier, but that's a good question, um, and uh, and and I'll say that it. It really got started when I uh, I had been working after I'd graduated from my, in my undergraduate work and I went back to school and because I thought I, there's something more that I want out of things and uh, through that path uh, not only did I did I end up with my uh, masters and my MBA and all that kind of stuff uh, but I also um, learned about what it's like to have a business of your own because I kind of I took a chance you know I I. I, I I I left work, you know, went back to school full time, used my savings, and I was making some bets about that stuff, and and it somehow that entrepreneurial spirit kind of gets c cultured there, and uh, and you you start having to figure out. It, well, first of all, it was on my dime, you know, it was my thing, my own, you know. I nobody told me I had to do all that stuff, <laughs> and uh, and as time has gone on. It's just kept. It's continued to build, and you know, when I had a young family, um, it was easier. It, it just made more rational sense to say, you know, I've got a decent job. I can kind of satisfy those desires to start a business by doing things within companies. But in, you know, in the longer run, you know, I guess now that I started my own, it's. I basically say this time it's for me. It's for. It's on my. It, in that same sense as when I went back to school, the way back when, you know, this is this is mine, and uh, uh, I'm going to make it be what I want it to be, and to be successful at it. You know, it's a life victory. That's right. That's right. So, what is your personal journey that led you to this moment in history? Ah. So well, I guess in a way we've covered that. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. I'm trying to go deeper and maybe get something else out of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think of, uh, you know, it's so when I was um, even when I was at Bell Labs um, and I got my MBA, you know, it was in my MBA in new venture development was kind of an expression of that desire to start, you know, to create a business of my own anyway. Uh, but I did a lot of work with. Uh, business strategy and helping to figure out which new kind of business opportunities we'd get involved with. I did some work creating um, the uh, technical and business plans for new services for AT and T. Uh, I ended up uh, when I when I went to NCR, you know, as man, I, I I took a chance and and um, an opening occurred for me to manage their uh, quarter billion dollar global Cisco program and that was like a huge step for me I've been a product manager before but uh, but uh, you know to uh, to step into that kind of role and to be dealing with uh, corporate executives and you know pre the you know presidents of the companies and building you know on a, we were at that time um, uh, NCR uh, where I was at was uh, Cisco's largest uh, enterprise uh, 
reseller and you know of, of Cisco equipment, and uh, we had it. It was an enormous task, but uh, such a challenge. And and it was you know what, I worked harder, and I was more turned on and excited than I'd been before. <laughs> it was, you know you I because I loved what I did. I I know that I was I you know, I I had taken effort to figure out what I love to do and do well and went after that and then, you know I found myself in that position and it, it was extraordinarily satisfying and then when I moved to Cisco itself and was working with their biggest partners you know the IBM's and Accenture's and and HP's of the world you know that kind of stuff and putting together things that they would do something um, the partner would do something Cisco would do something together for a particular set of customers and to see that then turn into something that that was uh, that that took off. <laughs> it's like wow, you know, it's amazing. I just love that stuff. So, and you were you part know. of it, a big part of it. I'm sorry. And you were a big part of it, so you were not an observer. You were actually in the middle of the action. So I was that's the instigator. <laughs> yeah, that's an ex that's exciting. Okay. Well, I'll like no. to say to your listeners, you know, one of the things that uh, I remember when I was uh, when I was a product manager at AT and T, doing some things with that hyper growth uh, business, I was responsible for developing some new offers, and and I worked with people in a variety of different uh, cross functional organizations, and and the one guy I liked, this guy Tony, <laughs> uh, is a really nice guy, but but he was also very playful about things, and you know. One time I was walking down the hall and I had an idea and I was I saw him and I and, and he saw that look in my eye and my eye and he says, Uh oh, here comes Eric again. He's got more ideas. Look out. <laughs> but that was <laughs> <he> got me. <laughs> yeah. All these ideas now are put into a different action. Your own business helping people with their first business move and the next, of course, your next business move. <laughs> and so let's talk about, Eric, let's talk about how you help people and really about getting clear about your lifestyle goals because once we already, we already mentioned how important this subject is for people. Sure. And so uh, what, I, what I'm going to do, first of all, let me say that I have a handout for this for people mm -hmm. that are interested. And you can get that handout if you go to free gifts with an S from Eric with a C dot com slash handout. That's free gifts from Eric dot com slash handout. That's H A N D O U T. And if you go there, you can grab that and either follow along or you can pick it up later. And uh, so there's really a five step process, and I'm looking at the handout myself here off to the side um, and you're not going to be well so it you'll you won't be surprised to hear that the number one thing you need to do is answer the question what do you want <laughs> what are your priorities you know what makes you happy but really get to, what do you want and it's worth taking a little time simply to sit down and think about that question in the bigger picture of things. And that's the first step that I would recommend of the five steps that I kind of want to walk you through. The second is to take that and tease it down. Look at the different areas in your life, the different relationships in your life. Make a list of those things and get clear about what those are. And, uh, you know, you can look at things like uh, your family, your significant other, your kids, you know, what uh, your work, uh, what you're doing in terms of exercise and well-being, if there are organizations and ho that you're involved with, hobbies that you're involved with, you get the idea. Like really look widely about your life and the areas and the relationships that are involved. And, you know, maybe there's some things that, certainly there's things that are part of your life now, but what would you like to add? Maybe there's some things that, you know, you've always said, you know, one, of the, one day <laughs> I'd like to have, you know, uh, I'd like to have a co hobby collecting Corvettes or whatever it is, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, also include that kind of stuff. And then there's some things that maybe you think, well, you know, in time, that's a, this is an area or a relationship that maybe I want to, like, phase out of things for myself. So once you've done that work, then guess what the next question is? What 
for each of those areas, for each of those relationships, what do you want? <laughs> it's a chance for you to sit down and make it much more granular to go through. And, and I'll say that doing this work and getting clear about that for these areas of your life, thinking about what you want in each of these areas, in, with each of these relationships, gives you a compass for yourself. Because as you get clearer with that and you get the chance to make choices as time goes on, you can start moving yourself in the direction of what your vision of what you want your life to look like is. And then the other thing is you can ask yourself, what actions can I take right here, right now, in this moment to move myself in the direction of what I want in each of those areas? Or even pick one or a couple. You, know, you can start somewhere and just work your way through it. And then if you have a business or you're thinking about a business, the next question to ask is, what is the impact of my business on each of those areas and relationships? How is it going to support those things? How is it going to cause concerns or issues with those things? And, and then how can I put things in place to make my business and what I want for my life work? And, uh, and then finally, the last thing is, it's fun to take a longer term vision. Think out a year, two years, five years. Well, let, for example, create a vision for yourself for what you'd like your life to look like in two years. And you know, you've done all this work with areas and, of, and relationships of your life. You've done all this work with what you want. Paint a picture for yourself. Make it vivid. And you can do that even what do you want it to look like in five years? And when you've done that kind of work, you have a shot at having the life of your dreams. There's work to be done. <laughs> you've got to take action. And sometimes the chips need to fall in your favor, right? But you've hedged your bets by giving yourself a clear vision of where you want to go. And so, like I say, as you have a chance to make choices as time goes on, you have much more clarity about which act, which path to take. So that's really what I wanted to say about it, and the handout will give you a lot more information. And I'll say there's a bonus on the back side. The second page is characteristics you'd like for your business. I don't want to take, we just don't have time to go into that right now, but do you get that as a bonus? Right. That's a great information. So in, in other words, you need to decide what city you're going to travel to and then get in the car and start driving there. If you don't know the clear vision of the place that you want to arrive, even driving in a car will not help because you need to know what city you're going to and if you don't drive and you don't get into that car, then you won't get in the first, there in the first place. Thank you, Eric. It's great. I love your very simple, but not simple. They just seem simple, but really it's the amazing work. People sometimes don't even think about it. They run, rush into the action, but first we really need to get clarity on what it is we want and then become strategic about it. So yes. would you mind repeating again where they can get it? your offer. Thank, you. Thank sure. you so much for this handout. That was really great of you. Sure. It's freegiftsfromeric.com. That's gifts with an S, Eric with a C. Freegiftsfromeric.com slash handout. H-A-N-D-O-U-T. Very good. Thank you. And any final thoughts, Eric, that you would like to share with everybody? And sure. I'm sure, just a second, I, I, will, I just, I'm dying to say, it. I just love you. You're such a great person, wonderful personality, amazing coach, as I already mentioned, and it's such a pleasure to be around you, so it's such a <laughs> gift for me. So go ahead How and share I your not final to hang around with you, Irina? <laughs> like, with someone that says with with someone who 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 uh, says things like that about me, and and I know you feel you know I can hear it in your heart. It's like wow, who would not want to be with you? 
So, uh, so I guess what I want to cl cl close up with is I'll tell you one other thing about me. When I was in high school, I was on a gymnastics team that was also a circus. And um, I happened to be the catcher. We had a trapeze act, and I was the catcher on the trapeze. Which was pretty amazing. It was a lot of fun, and I, you know, who knew, who would have figured that, you know, before that, before the opportunity kind of, I, you know, opened up to me. Who would have figured that that was something that would have showed up in my life? <laughs> but I remember the summer of my senior year, in particular, we were doing a show, and uh, it was outdoors, and we were down on the border between North and South Carolina, and it had gently misted a little bit, it rained very, you know, just a little bit of fog before the show. And everything was slippery. The mats were slippery. And when we did our opening tumbling runs, for example, you know, people were sort of slipping and sliding on the mats. So when we got to the trapeze act, I wiped down my trapeze and I got my legs locked in and got some sticky stick them on my hands and I was all ready to go. And the first fellow to uh, do the first trick, it was just a simple, he swung across, release, and then catch with two hands. But they forgot to wipe down the bar. And so this fellow, uh, he, he came swinging across and his hand slipped and he came shooting by me like, and, and I caught him literally with just like two fingers. And he's looking at me first like with complete terror and then relief. And I'm like, well, what do I do? And I was like, well, that's fine. So just reach up, get my other hand, we'll swing. I dropped him down. They wiped the bar and we proceeded with the show. But, you know, the thing is, if you, want to, if you want the life of your dreams, if you want the business of your dreams, even if you just want to get started in your business, in order to fly, you've got to let go. And I'll say that if you work with me, I'll be there to catch you. And if you need to, you know, swing, let you drop, pick you up again as time goes on, whatever is necessary to help you, you know, support you in, in getting where you want to go with things. And so I'll make an offer to you. And that is that if you'd like to take this further, I'm offering the opportunity for you to apply for a free candid clarity conversation with me. And it's not a coaching call. It's an opportunity for me to see if and how I can help you. And in that, we'll uncover your obstacles to what your next moves are for your business and your best strategic next step. And you can apply for that by going to yournextmoveexpert.com slash apply. That's yournextmoveexpert.com slash A-P-P-L-Y. And uh, I'd love to have a chance to talk to you, learn more about your business, and see if there's something that we can do together. Thank you, Eric. And Eric for sure knows how to catch you guys and physically from a trapeze and in business sense. So he is the guy to go to. Your next move business coach, Eric Aspect. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been a pleasure to have you here. And thank you for um, sharing your great information, your coaching. So I'm sure people will take an action, uh, do the work, get the hangout, handout, and they will come to you for the next move. So that's excellent. Thank you. And Such a treat. I really appreciate the opportunity to, oh, it's just a treasure to have a chance to speak with you and to share with your audience. Thank you so much. Oh, sure. You're welcome. Once again, it's Irina Baker, a life changing wizard. And thank you, everybody. Have a great day and goodbye. <laughs>